I'm going to show you how to make this fun and easy jungle themed cake, perfect for a wild one or too wild birthday party or for a baby shower. Start with a cake board or a cake drum at least two inches wider than your cake. Attach your first layer with a dot of buttercream and then alternate cake and filling to build your first cake. Cover it with a crumb coat, which is a very thin layer of frosting to trap in any crumbs that come off the cake. And this is going to be covered up so it doesn't need to be really neat. Put the cake in the fridge to chill this for about 30 minutes while you assemble your next tier. And for this cake, you'll need a large cake board and also a cake board the same size as the cake. Use a roll of masking tape or a non-slip mat to attach the two cake boards together and then assemble your cake on top of the small cake board. Cover this cake in a crumb coat too. And if you don't have a cake board as small as this cake, like I don't, you can trim the cake board. It's best to trim the cake board after you've crumb coated the cake and after chilling it so that the frosting on the cake is firm and even if you touch it, you won't damage it. To attach the cake on its little cake board to the big cake board, you can use your non-slip mat or if you find that the cake is wobbling around, you can use a dot of buttercream instead, pushing it down. And the reason for the big cake board is so that as you're spreading and smoothing the frosting on the cake, you don't get that frosting all over your turntable. After crumb coating both of your cakes, you'll need to give them a final coat of frosting. And as long as you wait for the crumb coat to set by putting it in the fridge for about 30 minutes, this final coat of frosting won't pick up any of the crumbs from the cake, so it will be perfectly crumb free. You are going to cover this cake with decorations, but do try to get the frosting as smooth as possible with the sharpest edge around the top of the cake to get the neatest shape for each of your cakes. Then put the frosted cakes in the fridge for at least an hour to chill them to get the frosting really firm before you stack your cake. Meanwhile, prepare your decorations. To make leaves, you'll need wafer paper, which you can cut using scissors into whatever jungly type leaves you like. I'm going to show you different ways to color these and tell you which way I think is best. The cheapest option is just to use the food coloring that you would use to tint your buttercream, gel colors, mixed with a little bit of water or alcohol like vodka to thin it out. The gel doesn't dissolve very well, so you'll have some clumps of coloring within the liquid. It's better to use alcohol than water because it evaporates more quickly, so it won't soak the wafer paper. The downside to using this method is that the colors aren't as true and the wafer paper is the most likely to snap in the process. When it dries, it's a little bit flexible, but again is likely to snap if you try to shape it. Glycerin really helps for effective coloring of wafer paper. You can buy it from cake shops and you'll see that when you add the gel color, it makes a much smoother liquid without any of those clumps. But if you spread it just like this onto your wafer paper, it won't really absorb. It sits on the surface and you won't get even coverage on your wafer paper. Instead of using it like this, with just the glycerin and the food color, add some clear alcohol or water and mix it together and then brush it onto your leaves. A quick note about wafer paper, you'll see that there are two different sides with different textures and it's fine to paint onto either of those sides. The combination of glycerin and color and alcohol paints very evenly onto the leaves while also softening them at the same time, making them more flexible and less likely to break. Let's look at the four leaves again. This is the one painted with glycerin and gel color. These next two are with glycerin color and vodka. And this last one was just color with vodka. While these dry, let's stack the cake. Use an offset spatula to slice underneath the smaller cake, which will separate it on its tiny cake board from the big cake board. Lift it up and put it on the larger cake and draw around it using an offset spatula to mark where the cake will eventually sit. You can touch these cakes with your hands because they've been in the fridge so long that the frosting has become really firm and won't get damaged. Now you'll need some supports. I'm using boba straws, which are thick, wide straws, and you'll need to push them in at least two inches within that line that you drew. Push all the way until it hits the cake board, pinch it, pull it out, and cut it at that point so it's the same height as the cake, and then hold it up against your other straws to cut them all the same height. I only need three straws to support my tiny four inch cake going on top, but if your cakes are larger, you can use four, five, or six straws. When you push them back into the cake, make sure they're all at least two inches apart from each other, as well as two inches within the line you scored. Spread some buttercream on top to act as glue, and then lift up and lower your small cake on top to stack your tear cake. There will be a messy join where the top cake meets the bottom cake, and that's very easy to cover up with some buttercream. Squeeze the buttercream all around the bottom of that top cake. Use your offset spatula or a cake comb to scrape off the excess and smooth it, and you'll have a much neater seam between the two tiers. 
To decorate this cake, use lots of shades of green. And the easiest way to do this is to mix one bowl of green frosting and then split it up into different holes of a cupcake pan. Add different colors to each of the greens. I'm using yellow for several and then adding orange, brown, red, black to make a jungly color palette. Now let's add lots of color and texture to the cake. Choose one color, spread blobs of it all around the cake, the bottom and the top tier, and then use a cake comb or an offset spatula to smooth those blobs. For textured patches, spread on another color and then use your offset spatula to create grooves in the frosting. You can use side to side motions like this or pull your offset spatula upwards to leave vertical grooves in the green frosting. There are lots of ways to add texture, so play around with it. These sort of wiggly motions make much softer texture, which is also fun. For tiny dots, put your frosting in a piping bag with a tiny piece cut off the end. And as you squeeze the bag to push the buttercream out, leave the tip of the piping bag within the dot that you're piping, which will help the buttercream spread out into a smooth round circle rather than leaving a big textured peak as you pull the bag away. In just two or three minutes, you can add tons of color and texture to your cake with this technique. By now your leaves will probably have dried and you can see that the leaf that was painted with just glycerin and color is very soft and sticky and difficult to handle. It wants to stick to my fingers rather than moving onto the cake. The leaves painted with glycerin color and alcohol are much easier to handle because they're flexible and not sticky, but they'll attach easily to the frosting on the cake if you push them gently. You could absolutely just do the frosting details on this cake without the leaves and it would still give it a very jungly theme. I'm adding some gold animal figures as finishing touches, which I bought on Amazon and washed and dried before attaching them to the frosting by pushing them gently in. And there it is, a jungle themed cake with lots of color and texture and detail that was very quick and easy to make. For more step-by-step -step cake decorating videos like this, check out my online cake school on britishgirlbakes.com. Thanks for watching.